Hello, this is As the World Burns. I'm your host, Randall Burns. It is May 9th, 2021. Today's topic is the Tesla ecosystem. Now, the mission of Tesla is to accelerate the world's transition to sustainable energy. And Tesla is rapidly becoming a major automaker and manufacturer of solar electric equipment. However, the importance of Tesla extends well beyond its corporate boundaries. First off, there are companies that are companies in regions that are empowered by, by that are empowered by Tesla. You know, we're, we're looking at a 50 to 75 percent reduction in cost per mile. There are companies for whom that's a very important factor in their business. And that has not been you know, commonly appreciated that it's happening yet or reflected in stock prices. And that is something for you know, we small investors to start looking at very seriously. Uh, Kathy Wood has done about as much of this as anyone. And she says that she thinks it's gonna affect about 50% of the S&P 500. And she's talked about you know, the companies that are maybe likely to go out of business as a result of this. She's not talking yet about the ones that are gonna have their stock prices appreciating as a, as effect of this and that represent a fairly low risk investment the type of investment that somebody could you know, say leverage with margin calls reasonably safely and so th that's that's another factor here now looking at it regionally is pretty easy from available statistics Okay, we know the states where the miles driven per citizen are high. Montana and Wyoming are prime examples. You know, they have a much higher rate of miles driven per citizen than other states. So Tesla reducing driving costs helps them and helps them in a dramatic way. Now, the other one that is not as commonly appreciated is regions with poor air quality. Los Angeles is one of the worst nationwide. It's, you know, stereotypical for that. And I think that they, that I kind of get the sense that Elon Musk has an idea of a LA turnaround in mind or something he'd kind of like to do. I think that's one reason he's thought in terms of, for example, of, you know, you know test tunnels in LA and a tunnel from LA to Las Vegas. I don't know how far that will go. You know, there may be issues with him and the California authorities. I'm not sure there. Detroit, by the way, has even worse air quality than Los Angeles, but I, I don't see Elon becoming a popular figure in Detroit anytime soon. Colorado is another story. Colorado, uh, Denver, Colorado has an air quality problem and I can definitely see uh, the Tesla solution catching on there. And Las Vegas, you know, they, they're already doing stuff in Las Vegas, though Las Vegas doesn't have the air quality problem that Los Angeles has. And we'll just have to wait and see. We'll just have to wait and see how this all develops. But I, I think it's going to be, I think you're going to see some real uh, regional issues coming to the fore here. Okay, now the other, the other part of the ecosystem is companies that license Tesla technology for niches in which Tesla does not operate and, and may not want to operate. Now, the two examples that are already with us, one is Aptera, which is licensing the Tesla charging network, uh, the Tesla uh, ch charging plug factor and, and I think that you're going to see an announcement fairly soon that they'll be having getting access to the Tesla supercharger network. Tesla has said explicitly they do not want to sell three wheeled vehicles. They don't want to, you know, they, they have other, they want to stick with the four wheel vehicle business, which is a more convention, you know, vehicles that look kind of like conventional cars. And the Aptera looks more like an airplane than a car. I mean, I think it's a great little car. I think it has some really interesting features. It's, I think 
for it to realize its potential, it's more dependent on the development of the ecosystem. For example, it's not a vehicle that you'd want to tow a trailer with. It may be able to tow something. It might be able to tow a really light trailer like the, uh, there's a teardrop from a, a Chesapeake Light Trap that's a really nice little trailer. And it can just about, but it's, it's only 250 pounds without the trailer and just about anybody can haul it. And I can see someone hooking that up to a trailer with, with the Aptera. And I can see that happening. But, you know, the, th the thing is for it to really realize its potential, like for example, I can see uh, with Tesla self-driving, you'll have self-powered trailer haulers. So even if you have a really light two passenger vehicle like the Aptera, you could haul an Airstream quite possibly on the weekends if you want, you know, just rent a trailer hauler and have it in convoy mode, you know, coming behind you. That's the type of thing I think that the uh, uh, Tesla autonomy could mean, you know, for, for vehicles. You could have people with a uh, electric Harley hauling a uh, Airstream that way. You know, there's nothing that would stop them from doing it. And it's just a question of how far that goes. The Boring Company is already taking Tesla vehicles into the public transportation market. That takes Tesla into competition with uh, the company that used to be Bombardier in Canada. They've been acquired recently. I forget the name of the company that acquired them. But you know, that, that is a whole other market. Okay. Now, they're kind of being thought of as a company you know, that's doing toll roads that will, on which Teslas will travel. I think they're, they're, they're becoming more than that. Like I say, you know, the, the, they have a public transit solution for a range of cities that haven't had a public transit solution before. And so that's, you know, really expanding the markets and expanding them beyond uh, competing, you know, with companies like Ford and GM into markets that they just haven't touched. Now, there are companies that could leverage Tesla autonomy that I don't think are thinking about it just yet. Two examples would be Caterpillar and, or actually three, John Deere, Caterpillar, and International Harvester. Autonomy would be a major asset in all of the markets that they cover. You know, John Deere and International Harvester obviously do agricultural applications. And Caterpillar and John Deere both do heavy construction equipment. But the, the thing that autonomy opens up that has not been well explored yet, you can do a lot of things with really small autonomous excavators and Caterpillar tractors. And you can maybe do something more efficiently with a lot of small tractors and with a few big ones. And when autonomy really becomes more mature, that opens a lot of interesting possibilities. I mean, I can see like, you know, one operator, you know, manning an army of these things and getting a lot of work done really fast. And this is something that, you know, it's, 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 it's barely being conceived right now. Okay, but I think it's going to be, it may be a, even a bigger revolution than autonomy for, for private cars. Now, another segment of the ecosystem is companies that exist now in market segments like, like car transport that will cut a deal with Tesla to survive. And this would be, you know, VW is an example of that in the uh, automotive sector. You know, you know, they are talking like they're trying to compete head to head against Tesla. I don't think that's going to work. I think they're going to eventually realize that their best deal, that their best route is to cut a deal and they will. And, you know, the president of the VW is a, is a friend of Elon's. I think they'll cut a deal. I think they'll get a good, I think they'll get a deal in decent terms. I think that the companies that come later will be paying 
more dearly by quite a bit. But, but, and, and now there's some that it just won't be much of a problem with. I mean, for example, Rolls Royce BMW. People buy a Rolls Royce for the appointments. Tesla is not competing in that market. And so they just want to get the best motors that they can and then add their value. And, and they'll keep on doing that, which is just like they always have at, at, at exceedingly high prices. And they have you know, staff that do things in terms of detailing that literally nobody else on the planet can do. And they'll keep on doing it. I don't see any reason for them to stop. They just are going to do it with different suppliers. Okay. And, but to perhaps to a higher standard than what they've been able to do before. I think you're going to see various uh, energy companies, electric utilities will be coming hat in hand to Tesla. It's going to be their best route to stay relevant. And, and they, I think they will do so. I think that you know, right now the test case of that is Tesla, is Texas, and that's going to happen. Now, there's another class, which is companies that become valuable in response to Tesla. Arkimoto has not clearly, for example, uh, license, said they're going to license Tesla autonomy software. I think they'll eventually wind up doing it, but I don't think they're going to do it in an obvious way. And I think part of the reason is they want to be attracting as an acquisition target for desperate legacy manufacturers. They want at least to have that as an option. And there again, they, they now they also do occupy a segment, the three-wheeled vehicle segment that Tesla said they don't want. But they're but they're but you know basically Aptera is kind of cozying up to Tesla. Arkimoto is maintaining an image of independence. We'll see how that unfolds. Okay. Saunders e-bikes. One of the side effects of autonomy is to make the roads safer for cyclists. And that means that there's a lot of areas in which a two or three wheel cycle becomes a lot more practical than it is today. I mean, we already, they're already by key arguments, more practical vehicles than, than automobiles. Automobiles are danger, conventional automobiles are dangerous to the environment, they're dangerous to the surrounding pedestrians, they're dangerous to other cars, and they have the side effect of contributing to an obesity epidemic. Now, Tesla is a conventional car in that respect, but e-bikes are not. E-bikes let people get exercise while they're doing their day-to-day -day transportation. And I think you're going to see a, I think the, the, the rise in e-bike use and e-trike use may be actually more dramatic than any changes that we see in miles driven per capita. I don't think we're going to see, I think we, we may not see huge differences in miles driven per capita. And, and we may see less personal car ownership. And e-bikes and e-trikes may, may be picking up some of the gap there with, uh, with the Tesla Robotaxi network there for when people really you know, need a car for a specific purpose in a specific time. But that's some idea of how I see this ecosystem emerging around Tesla. Uh, another add-on that is important there Another aspect is add-ons and companies that are selling products that are specifically empowered by Tesla. A real prime example of that is the Cyberlander camper for the Tesla Cybertruck. And you know, that is a camper designed from the ground up to be appropriate for the Cybertruck. It has a lot of technical advantages. It doesn't, for example, reduce uh, fuel economy by very much. And Tesla basically did the marketing for that company. I mean, they established the market and then so now a relatively small new company is coming in there and 
eating the lunch of some of the legacy uh, travel trailer and camper vendors with a much higher quality product, you know, just like Tesla did in automobiles. So they're, you know, they're, I mean, they're, they're, they're trying to kind of establish themselves as kind of the, the airstream of the high tech camper world. And I think they, they may well do it. I mean, they, they have right now, I believe there are about a million depo uh, deposits for cyber trucks and they're about 300,000 deposits for the, uh, cyber cyberlander that's a lot that's a lot and there are going to be other businesses that are going to be riding tesla's coattails in the same way and those are going to be i think more substantial actually if you looked at you know like the total gdp i think they're they're, they're going to be some multiple of teslas and we need that to really un, you know to look at them as part of the situation to really understand the full impact of Tesla on the U.S. and world economy. So this is As the World Burns. Thank you very much for joining me. Please hit that like button. Please subscribe. I, I, I love subscribers. And thank you for joining me. I will keep on making content. You take care. Bye.